the humble foam dart. Had to get those placement shots first. That is, uh, it's not something you can normally do with, again, the humbled foam dart. It's time for day five of Tag Back. Yes, Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it can offer us today in the present. And this time, we're not even looking at something that's old or obscure or... I mean, it's something you can still get your hands on for, well, it's not a reasonable price, I can tell you that right up front. But it is a blaster that has been floating around for a couple of years, and it's something that I've neglected to do a full video on. But what we're taking a look at is probably one of the most expensive production nerf blasters you can get your hands on. And that is the Saber Construct M20 from Saber. Now, if you've been watching the channel for quite some time, as you should, maybe hit that subscribe button. I know 70% of you are not subscribed, and that is heartbreaking. And I'll give you one better. If this video can reach 1,500 likes, next week I'll do a video on another blaster that I know you want to see a video on that I've neglected to ever finish. But let's just rip that band-aid off. The Saber Construct M20 is a blaster that you can buy, but I'm never going to recommend you do because this thing right here, what you're looking at, is over $700. And no, that's not a mistake. $700 US. That includes this chassis with a couple of different spring and barrel options, the metal trigger and the metal mag release. And I'm actually kind of glad that I waited to do the video on this because things have changed that were problems for me that have been addressed over the last months. Now this unassuming gray brick of a blaster is a completely metal and Delrin foam dart shooting platform. It has an expandable stock, which is yeah, that's the maximum length, and it's it's an okay length of pull. I find it pretty comfortable. And a screw-on barrel, which is kind of cool. This thing can break down into a pretty compact package, which I absolutely love. In fact, I pretty much love the entire design of this thing. I don't know, something about these square aesthetics really sing to me. The blaster comes with absolutely no forward priming grip, although it's compatible with any Picatinny priming grip, like this worker one here. And it comes with no rear grip, so you have to procure one yourself. This is an Airsoft AEG grip, and it's meant for Airsoft AEG grips in general. However, I had three of them, and I had to Dremel all three of them to get them to fit on this platform. And I settled with this one because it's really comfortable in my hand. But that means there's a good amount of customization. Even though this thing is a brick, you can choose your rear grip and your foregrip, although you'll have to buy them separately. And the blaster itself is compatible with Talon mags. And uh, I'm gonna aim this a little low because yeah, it's gonna blow a hole right through the sound deadening material I use because this thing is pretty dumb. Now, unfortunately I lost the other barrel and spring somewhere in the studio and I can't give it the full review it deserves. So what I have here is pretty much the way it came to me and it was uh, Saber's optimal configuration. Each one of these blasters is even individually serialized and this one is number 47 for Agent 47 from the Hitman series. So why is this thing worth talking about? Well, some of you already don't care because it's a $700 nerf blaster. They start at a little over 600 US. They do have a cheaper version, but the cheaper version isn't cheap enough to really warrant anything. But these blasters are built from the ground up to be practically indestructible. From someone who's had multiple blasters broken by the TSA as I fly across the country for events, uh, that's a pretty compelling argument. In fact, when I was flying down to Texas to do a thing with the Modern Rogue, this was the blaster I brought because I know it wasn't ever going to break. The entire body is made of Delrin, which I think is like the strongest thermoplastic that you can buy. And then the rest of the body is either steel or aluminum. But this was one of the first blasters I ever got my hands on that had a bearing system in the pump grip. It's way overbuilt for its own good. Yes, I could drop this thing out the window right now, pick it up and still fire it, but I don't want to because it's really expensive. And no, I did not buy this. It was sent to me and I still didn't do the video on it, which makes me an awful human being. 
Is that worth the price of admission before we talk about anything else? Having a nearly indestructible blaster that costs almost $700, if not more, once you fully kit it out? Uh, maybe? If you're like seriously super competitive with your foam flinging darts and really want a blaster that will stand the test of time, that will do pretty much anything you want it to, and live to tell the tale, yeah, that extra premium could be worth it, especially since you can change out the barrel rather easily, as you saw it screws right in, and you can swap out the spring, which is the second major con about this blaster, removing the spring in this is an absolute nightmare. It requires three different tools for three different screw sizes, and then everything kind of just comes flying out and it's awful. I, it doesn't really matter how good everything is if the basic stuff it does is just a pain in the butt. However, since I received this thing, there have been multiple iterations of the quick change spring mechanism. In fact, the latest one I looked up just before I shot this video allows you to screw on a buffer tube stock if you don't want to use this thing, which to be honest, it's not very good. Yes, for nearly 800 USD, you could have nearly a perfect blaster that just is way too heavy. It has a Picatinny rail up at the top, but it doesn't come with a full length one for some insane reason. It's got M-Lock on the side of it if you have accessories that would work with that, so you can have Picatinny rails on the side of it. And it is essentially a Caliburn. Uh, the spring trigger sear system is entirely the same. Now, one of the reasons why I made a big deal about the bearings in the pump action is because this thing is one of the easiest blasters in the world to prime. I, it, it, it is, a child could do this. In fact, if you lower the spring load, a child literally can prime this blaster. I just want to preface this by saying with this footage that you're seeing right now of the chronographing, that I've done zero maintenance to this thing other than taking out the plunger head, relubing it, and fixing the plunger padding, which was about a year ago. I haven't oiled it, I haven't done anything. In fact, after this, I'm going to oil the rails and make it even more smooth to prime. The barrel that it came with at the end of the barrel it actually has fishing line that adds a little bit of rifling to the end of your shot, which means, yes, darts coming out of this thing are spinning much like real steel projectiles, and it is incredibly accurate for what it was, especially when it came out. But I have fired thousands of shots through this thing. I have given it to so many different people to check out, and pretty much everybody liked it with the exception of the heavy weight. And I don't really know much about like selling stuff and making things like this. Maybe those prices are reasonable for what Saber is delivering here. I don't know how much it would cost to get this mold made out of Delrin. I don't know how much it would cost to get all these custom metal pieces done, but it's really too expensive. And that's the biggest problem with the Saber. I just, I could never recommend it because of that price. And nobody is gonna say that's worth it. I'm never gonna tell you that this is worth buying. Even if you were worried about your blaster breaking, you could buy several worker Swifts for the same price as one of these things. The really light priming weight, how smooth that is, that matters a lot, especially when you're using one of the blasters. One of the problems I have with a Swift is that if you max out that spring load, it becomes really difficult to prime because there's no assistance on that priming bar whatsoever. This thing's gonna flex, it's gonna move, and that's why the bearings are so good. And I'm tempted to buy a new barrel with a bearing scar, a full length rail, and get that new changeable plug in the back so I can easily swap out my spring loads. So I have a pretty close to perfect blaster except for the sheer weight of it all. I will have a link down in the description below where you can check one of these things out. Maybe it will go on sale for a little bit, I'm not quite sure. It's a pretty awesome thing that I would never recommend you ever buy. But this is not a new blaster and it has been with me across the country and I have dropped it, I have abused it, and I have not a scratch on the darn thing and it works just like the day I took it out of the package. And to some of you, that's worth paying a premium for. But again, 1,500 likes on this video within the next week and I will do a video on another really expensive blaster that I've neglected to do a full video on and I'll explain why I neglected to do that video. And yeah, 70% of you aren't subscribed, so if you could hit that button, we'd hit that 200k a lot faster. But that's all I've got for you. I'm all comment seven. Thank you very much for watching this video, and thank you for joining me for the month of Tag Backsmith. That means there will be another video tomorrow, and there were videos before this one. There's a playlist. You can find it in the top right corner thing or on the homepage for the channel. Join me every day this month for a video on another blaster. And of course, I hope to see you in tomorrow's video.